Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Lucas Samoth, and today I'm here to talk to you about what the entire world is calling the plastic surgery capital of the world. I will be the exploring the development of plastic surgery in South Korea and comparing it to what many people are also calling the plastic surgery capital of the world, Brazil. Come with me to dive into a brief history on the plastic surgery in South Korea. This is David Ralph Millard. He is given credit for studying plastic surgery in Korea. A U.S. Marine surgeon, he was left in Korea in 1953 to help provide humanitarian aid in an effort to display American goodwill in Asia. At first, Millard was actually reluctant to practice in Korea, but he soon found the post-war conditions provided an optimal environment for practicing plastic surgery because of the variety of cases he received. As he started to perform some facial reconstructions, he started to think more about the Korean ethnic identity. According to the story, one day a Korean translator requested Millard to make him into a round eye. From there, Millard recognized that the two main distinctive Asian characteristics were the nose and the eyelids. He then performed eyelid surgery and a nose job, which became what is known as the modern origin of cosmetic plastic surgery in Korea. Fast forward a decade later, and Dr. J. Duk Yu brings his research and practices that he learned at the University of Minnesota Medical School to South Korea and begins to practice plastic surgery methods at the first plastic surgery department in Korea at the medical school of Yonsei University. In the 1990s, Korea was just coming out of a military di dictatorship and saw plastic surgery emerging as a commodity because of the sudden growth in newspaper that led to growth and coverage of and attention to the plastic surgery industry in Korea. Growth in cosmetic plastic surgery in the 90s was short-lived due to the IMF crisis. In this time of great economic distress, the Korean government deregulated a lot of business in an attempt to stimulate the economy, and it worked. When the, gov when the Korean economy recovered in 2001, a lot had changed economically and socially. The plastic surgery industry had seen huge expansion and fierce competition. Plastic surgery also expanded into other Asian markets thanks to the Korean wave, which exported dramas, songs, and films that acted as advertisement platforms for cosmetic surgery. Now let's talk a little bit about why and how plastic surgery is so successful in Korea. According to ResearchGate, the prices of the majority of plastic surgeries in Korea are well over two times cheaper than those in the US. With new technologies and changing beauty standards around the world, plastic surgery is becoming more popular and cheaper. This, however, is happening everywhere. So what makes Korea unique in the sense of prices? The answer is competition. Korea has the third largest number of plastic surgeons, but the, great num the greatest number per capita. As mentioned before, competition is fierce in co Korean plastic surgery, driving prices down. The medical industry in Korea has become a powerhouse, and the government goes through great lengths to protect it as a national interest. In 2008, 642 million euros were invested into advertising Korea as a leading destination for aesthetic surgery tourism. Furthermore, during the 2009 financial crisis, plastic surgery suffered, so the government temporarily allowed citizens to claim tax credit for the cost of cosmetic surgery. Korea seems to be the powerhouse of plastic surgery. However, I am here to talk about how this phenomenon is actually not as unique as Korea as it is talked about. We already know through history that plastic surgery is not something unique or traditional to Korea because it was brought mostly from the United States. Yet, Korea was able to heavily embed it into their popular culture. Don't get me wrong, Korea has an enormous plastic indu surgery industry, but the phenomenon has been man manifesting in Brazil in a very similar way. According to Forbes, Brazil has the second largest amount of cosmetic surgeries in the world and it actually ranks number one in quantity for butt lifts, butt fa fat transfers, butt implants, and more surprisingly, eyelid surgery. Instead of me explaining differences and similarities between the plastic surgery industry between the two countries, here are highlights from an interview I conducted with a Brazilian doctor named Lucilene, who is well versed in different aspects of plastic surgery, mainly in Brazil, but also in Korea. Brazil has a huge coast, and the big cities of Brazil are pretty close to the coast, so a lot of people go to the beach very often to go enjoy themselves. After all, we are a tropical country. This makes it so that a great deal of women seek plastic surgery. I believe that it's about 87% of plastic surgery recipients are actually women. And of course, yes, there are men who do it too, and it's very interesting. Since women have their bodies more exposed at the beach more often, they seek to change things that they dislike. Another thing I believe created a boom in the plastic surgery industry in Brazil is the demand because we have a huge supply of professionals specialized in plastic surgery. 
These professionals need to work, so they compete for it. <laughs> These surgeries are very expensive, but professionals use methods such as dividing up payments to make it more affordable. For reconstructive plastic surgeries, insurances typically pay for them, but if they don't, then the government has to pay through the national medical insurance. In countries with a lot of social inequality, the body becomes a powerful capital used to demonstrate social ascension. The big difference between Korea and Brazil is that the focus on bodily aspects is very dominant in Brazil, whereas in Korea, the focus is mainly on the face. In general, in the middle and upper class in Brazil, the standard of beauty is still heavily centered on curves, but women try to be more slim about it. In what we call the popular class in Brazil, the standard of beauty is more of a voluminous curvy. As you can see, there are many similarities in the two industries. Both countries have a great number of surgeons, which is creating a lot of competition with lower prices. This isn't as articulate in Brazil because of the large spread poverty that prohibits consumption. From a sociology aspect, plastic surgery is utilized in both countries as a way to speak politically and socially. There is a huge conversation happening around feminism and plastic surgery, especially in Korea. One of the theories that is, is that plastic surgery in Korea is enabling women to break apart from the patriarchy, which is similar to what Lucy Laney was speaking about in countries with social inequalities. Plastic surgeries in both countries conform to its beauty standard. However, it is the different beauty standards in each country that creates a difference in plastic surgeries. Lucilene perfectly articulates how in tropical Brazil, having an exposed body is common, which has led to a focus on bodily aesthetics, whereas in Korea, the focus is more on the face. As you can see, Korea is not a particularly big exception to the trends of plastic surgery around the world, yet media portrays it to be. This might be due to current attention that Korea is receiving and simply writing or it might have some racial or political motivation behind it. By analyzing Brazil's plastic surgery industry, I hope that I have been able to show to you that the two really aren't that different after all. Now, if you don't mind, I have some important reading to do.